To the extent that it exists, CES has arrived, and AMD has a lot of announcements for this week. It's setting the tone for the rest of 2022 and lining up launches at least through middle of the year. AMD has a couple of things coming out in January, like the 6500 XT scheduled for this month. It also has some on the horizon things for spring, like Zen 3D, and some further out items in second half, like the AM5 socket, an interesting IHS for Zen 4 CPUs, and some more items. We're going to talk about all that today. Before that, this video is brought to you by Be Quiet and the Silent Base 802 case. The Silent Base 802 got high accolades in our review for its high build quality and its versatility in both science focused and airflow focused builds. The 802 comes with swappable mesh panels or noise damped panels, so you have options for either approach. The Silent Base 802 case is able to fit larger builds as well without being overbearing, and it stands out for its mechanics quality and assembly quality. Learn more about Be Quiet's new case at the link in the description below. This disappointment build is really casting a shadow, but we're going to go through the items point by point. The items to go over today will be the AM5 and the CPU IHS, Ryzen 6000 Mobile, including DDR5 support, uh, Zen 3 Plus and Zen 4 are in the news, FSR as it's being updated, Radeon Super Resolution for quarter one, we'll talk about some driver updates, uh, 3D Vcache updates, and the 6500 XT. That'll be most it for today. For our audience, AM5 and Zen 4 are clearly the most interesting things. These are also the things AMD have the least information on, but there is official information now, so it's not just rumors at this point. Uh, AMD talked about the IHS design and moving to LGA as part of its presentation. And this is the integrated heat spreader. So matching the leaks from a few months ago almost exactly, you can see that this is a very unique design. It's not the normal sort of square IHS. We asked AMD if there were any engineering reasons for this design, and the representatives claimed that there are, but they'd have to get back to us on what those might be. It's certainly much harder to delid without damage, although they definitely didn't design around that, such a small user base. The SMDs are positioned all around the IHS, but otherwise it's obviously a hard fork from the usual rectangular design. We're hoping to learn more about that soon. We'll let you know as soon as we are informed as to what decisions might have been made for this, but otherwise that's the limit of what we know now. Here's a look at the socket. This is a move to LGA, or Land Grid Array, from the usual PGA, or Pin Grid Array, that AMD uses in desktop. AMD has used LGA recently, most recently on Threadripper, and moving to LGA for desktop means a shift of warranty responsibilities for one to the motherboard manufacturer from AMD. But this also brings with it a much better retention system for removing or replacing CPU coolers. Our cooler technician will be thrilled to hear about this, because when you're swapping coolers regularly, PGA is annoying. You do have to do a lot of extra work to make sure the pins aren't damaged and it stays in place. Now in the past, we've heard that LGA costs more, specifically for the motherboards. Makes sense. More complex part to buy. Uh, RMAs are affected, so that gets factored into price. So we asked AMD if this would affect motherboard cost. The company more or less said, well, maybe a little bit, but uh, it says it's not a huge difference, especially compared to something like DDR5 versus DDR4. DDR5 will be present on AM5 platforms, so that's where the larger cost driver will be uh, associated. And they also noted that LGA assists with interconnect density. It said that the socket will have 1,718 pins. Doesn't really matter for comparison A to B, but just for reference, Intel is currently on 1,700 pins, so there's similar pin count there. The AM5 CPUs will move to Zen 4 for the initial launch, and AM5 will stick around for a little while after that. Zen 4 is planned for the second half of 2022. AMD's generally been fairly on target with its releases. Zen 3D seems a little bit delayed, but for the most part, they've been more or less their guidance has been accurate. So 2022 second half, AMD said that AM4 coolers will work with AM5 sockets. This is fantastic news. Coolers don't really go bad per se. It's mostly just metal on a lot of them. So uh, that's great to see going forward uh, supports so that you don't necessarily have to upgrade beyond just getting a different retention kit. That's all the official information about Zen 4 and AM5 right now though. As for the Zen 3D launch, which is going to be the 5,000 series CPUs with more cash stacked vertically, that's still planned for spring of this year. We already talked about the basics of Zen 3D and the design, so you can check that video out in the description below. That's from when they first announced it. The new information from today is this. And these 3D Vcache will be featured on definitely at least the 5800X. They are calling it the 5800X 3D, and previously it was demonstrated on a 5950X. We would assume that the 5950X 3D will exist and likely the 5900X 3D, but the 5800X 3D is the one that was explicitly talked about in the presentation. We're uncertain at this time if the 5600X will get the cache treatment as well. The gains may not scale to that processor's capabilities, so 
maybe it doesn't make sense there. And these internal benchmarks project an average of a 15% uplift in performance as compared to the 5900X without 3DB cache. This isn't a like for like comparison, obviously the 5900X being on this chart, but it's still a positive indication for AMD and we'll withhold further judgment until we can run our own third party tests. So that's it for Zen 3D right now. No further information on that. Uh, as a reminder, it's the existing 5000 CPUs. They've added cache to it. They stack vertically, that's why it's cool. And uh, it does not change the Z height of the processor. So the IHS height to the floor of it is all the same. All right, AMD also announced it's rising 6000 CPUs for mobile. And uh, with those come Zen 3 Plus CPUs with a 60 nanometer process, still TSMC for that and RDNA 2 GPUs. AMD highlighted advancements in power consumption as the primary benefit of these new CPUs, likely one part process technology advancement and one part architectural design. AMD claimed a five gigahertz core speed. We asked for a clarification on whether that's all core or single core, dual core. AMD said single core, single thread boost speed, five gigahertz maximally. So that demystifies that number for you. The company claimed a quote, two X increase in graphics. We said, what does that mean? 2x what and what metric? The answer was average FPS and uh, previous generation for the comparison. 1080p was the reference point. AMD noted that frame times are fairly linear in improvement here, although did not give specifics beyond that. The company also showed several slides talking about 24 hours of battery life. We asked about the battery size, but uh, AMD didn't give us an answer at briefing time. Our understanding from the briefing is that it's one of the largest available laptop batteries. So not a particularly useful metric if you don't buy that exact battery, but we can still drive something from it. AMD noted that this metric was measured with a single video playing on loop. What we do know is that a like for like test was run with the previous generation and in like for like testing where they are directly comparable, regardless of whether we know what the variables were, the older generation ran a three hour shorter battery life versus the newer generation. The cores here will max out at eight cores, 16 threads. Again, this is Ryzen 6000 for mobile. So there may be a 6000 for desktop later on AM5. Maybe they'll rename it to keep things uh, hopefully less of a confusing cluster of CPU names, but we'll see. Either way, 6,000 of the mobile stuff. Uh, they are also introducing deeper sleep states. AMD is referring to these as Z states. Sleep states, you generally, if you're talking about Windows, for example, you're referring to S3, S4, sleeper, hibernate, things of that nature. On CPUs and GPUs, there are ramp and deramp and sleep periods where if the component isn't being fully utilized, it can put parts of the core or parts of the uh, structure as a whole to sleep for power consumption reasons. So this isn't new as a concept, obviously, but uh, deeper sleep states have been involved. The risk with doing a deeper sleep state on a silicon component is the potential latency for a ramp. So as it wakes back from sleep, how quickly can it snap to doing the work that is relevant to its being awake? And obviously that'll show up in testing if it's a problem or not. AMD will be launching these laptop CPUs with LPDDR5 compatibility and PCIe Gen 4, but also a new display engine. For the specs or the options, the CPUs will include those on the screen, the 6980HX, 6980HS, 6900HX, HS variant as well, 6800H and HS, 6600H and HS, and then U variants that we won't read off. All of these will be Zen 3 Plus, except for the 5000 series, which is Zen 3. The CPUs max out at five gigahertz boost and 20 megabytes cache with a maximum of 12 RDNA 2 GPU CUs at 2400 megahertz. As for TDP, that scales from 15 watts to 45 watts plus, depending on the SKU. Now time for GPU news. AMD had GPU news for both its laptops and its desktops. Desktops don't will focus more on, but we'll start with laptops briefly. On that side, AMD is introducing the 6800M, 6700M, and 6600M, and they mostly made a big deal about the fact that you can buy these things with its new processors on the same machine, uh, stating that it had been a while since that's been available. Skipping past these and the news that we're actually interested in from our coverage standpoint, and they revealed its previously rumored RX 6500 XT desktop GPU. This GPU will run 16 CUs or compute units. For comparison, the RX 6600 has 28 CUs and the 6600 XT has 32 CUs. At the higher end, you see the 6700 XT with 40 CUs and the 6900 XT maxing out at 80 compute units. The 65 XT then advertises a 2600 megahertz game clock, as AMD calls it, 
uh, with base and boost yet unspecified and 16 megabytes of cache. No further technical details disclosed at this time. AMD had some internal benchmarks. We'll just show one of them. The company is mostly gearing up for a comparison against the GTX 1650 and the RX 570, where it's seen uplift versus both in its suite of tested games. Versus the 1650, the uplift is a reported 24 to 59 percent, depending on the game tested. And we'll obviously provide third-party tests. Uh, this is some. This is a component we do benchmark regularly. So once it's available to us, we'll get you a review online. Andy says the MSRP will be $200 for this. Uh, just for point of reference, that is the same MSRP as the RX 580 4 gigabyte model. 8 gigabyte was closer to 240 when it came out. Those are several years old at this point. Uh, but that gives you an idea for where it would fall on the stack, sort of comparatively. Uh, the release date is January 19th, and they will not be selling a reference version of this card. It's a partner-only launch. Partners would be companies like Sapphire, Asus, etc. So those will be your only options for a, a GPU of this caliber. And then finally, AMD also had some driver updates to discuss. Most notably, AMD stated that Radeon Super Resolution will launch in quarter one, powered by FSR and acting as an in-driver upscaler. The only other major feature addition is AMD's privacy view. Privacy view acts as a digital version of a privacy screen. You might be familiar with the privacy screen where you stick it onto a laptop, for example, uh, and in theory, it makes it hard to see what's on the screen from an improper viewing angle. So the idea with privacy view is that it does not require one of the screens. It's digital and it uses eye tracking, uh, which we have mixed feelings about sort of that level of tracking human input, but regardless, uses the eye tracking to see where you're looking and then it blurs everything else on the screen so that it becomes difficult to discern. And in theory, if there's an onlooker uh, over your shoulder or something, they'd have trouble keeping up since they don't know where you're looking. Should, in theory, it should be even harder to keep up with than if you were trying to look through a privacy screen. But that's the only major feature revision that we saw on the list. So that's it for AMD's news. The things we're most interested in would obviously be Zen 3D, Zen 4, and AM5 later in the year. Uh, and then the RX 6500 XT, you can check back the channel for all that as we go. And you should go to store.gamersaccess.net to grab one of our Disappointment Build 2021 shirts before they're gone. We are in the third round now already after just two days of the video being up at the time of filming this one. So uh, get in there if you want round three. It's on the store. And check out the video if you haven't seen it. It's a lot of fun. Anyway, that's it for this one. Stay tuned for other news this week. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more. We'll see you all next time.